Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy Eden here, welcome back to the channel and to my final piece of coverage for Guild Wars 2's latest episode, A Star to Guide Us, which is episode 4 of The Living World Season 4, and I've completely finished what I needed to do here in terms of collecting the episode achievements, the armor set, and experiencing all kinds of content that came with this episode, and it's time to talk about it, and this is my quick fire rapid review of all the new content. So we'll go through everything from the armor skin collection, to the events, Sun's Refuge, the story, the map, all that stuff in a pro and cons format best and worst good and bad and at the end feel free to share your thoughts and comments and your experiences in the comments section below let's begin with the basics episode 4 if you haven't watched any of my coverage I live streamed the entire playthrough for the story warning spoiler alert in addition to a story review as well and a map playthrough all of which you can see by clicking the card on the top right of your screen. Episode 4, A Star to Guide Us continues where we last left off in Episode 3. So as you'd expect, the main story continues with your band of characters. We've got a new map, the Jahai Bluffs, new activities, and a shiny new meta collection to collect, and that is the Requiem Armor Skin Collection. And I suppose let's begin with that. Once you've completed the main story and have unlocked Sun's Refuge, which we'll talk about later, you are now free to begin your collection for this new armor set, and it comes in two stages of collection. You've got the Elegy Armor Collection Part 1, which is for the base exotic set of armor, which comes in the Grieving Stats, and once you've completed that, you unlock the Elegy Armor Collection 2 for the Requiem Armor Skins Collection, which is basically plain skins, doesn't come with any stats whatsoever, but, but they do look frigging awesome. This is what this episode and map meta reward is all about. Once you've completed everything, you want these armor skins. The new volatile magic vendor on the map does sell the usual stuff like a new portal scroll to bring your alts to the Jahai Bluffs, in addition to other stuff that you can get for volatile magic. And then once you've completed your entire Requiem armor skin collection for your chosen weight, light, medium, heavy, you can then buy the other weights as well with the map currency which are lumps of Estonium. Let's talk about the entire process of how to unlock the Requiem armor skin collection. It all starts with a series of fun narrative driven scavenger hunts typical Guild Wars 2 fashion where you have to complete events talk to certain NPCs discover locales and things of that nature for the achievement unlocks that really ensures players actually experience much of the events happening on the Jahai Bluffs map which is tied to Sun's Refuge the entire LG 1 and LG 2 collection doesn't take more than a couple of days if you really want that Requiem armor skin collection fast you will depend on other players a lot because some of them like the Jin event and the Shatterer event are all necessary as you move along to unlock part 2 of the collection. So expect to be doing lots of running back and forth, especially for LG part 2, which will send you to the Derman Priory all the way back in the Corteria area to unlock a new individual piece of that armor skin. The other thing to note is that it is pretty costly because for each individual piece of unlock in that LG 2 collection, you will need a certain amount of materials. Lumps of Mistonium is a given, and I think in total there's about 4 450 of them that you will need for the entire collection of your chosen weight class and in addition to that you will need other stuff too for example sigils of nullification which is prior to this episode a pretty useless sigil but ArenaNet has chosen to make this part of this collection so the prices of the sigils on the trading post has gone up so much that it's become incredibly expensive just to buy 25 of them but once you've completed everything and you do have that Requiem armor skin collection, it looks great, especially for me, I can only speak for myself, I picked the heavy armor skin collection and it just looks so different from any of the other armors that I previously had and I really like the design of it. You have individual dye channels and the coolest part is that glowy smoky aura that comes out of your helm and shoulders and arms and even your, your feet that you can dye which ends up looking really really glorious. Now the worst part or negatives for this entire Elegy 1 and 2 collections for the skin I think for me personally comes down to a lack of choice when it comes to the actual usability of that base exotic armor set in LG part 1. You only have one choice and that is to pick the armor with the grieving stats. Grieving has its uses for some class, especially those that want to run with some Condi. For me as a firebrand, great, it's another alternative but I prefer using my Vipers or Yasith's gear instead of grieving. So this then becomes, okay, well, what do I do with this except chuck it in the bank or start salvaging this for a chance at dark matter because it's exotic. I kind of wish ArenaNet would have given us a choice of a box of armor set with our own preferred stats. Hey, let us pick a Berserkers or Carrion or something. Would have that been too much to ask for instead of just getting one set of grieving stats gear that other classes may look at and go, yeah, can use that, but hey, for skins, yay. 
moving on now let's talk about events in the jihai bluffs and for episode 4 specifically the best event my favorite has to be the death branded shatterer as soon as we players found out there's going to be another shatterer and that it is tied to the story really excited and to see this thing in action was really satisfying the fight itself pretty standard you've got your burn phases you've got the three phases of the shatterer healing itself with all these rush stalkers coming out so it was a challenge very early on but as soon as the player base kind of grasped the idea it becomes easy and then doing your shatterer daily for that extra lumps of mistonium became a walk in the park but still a really fun fight the design is awesome that thing looks amazing and that is your jihai bluffs meta event happens every two hours there's pre-events for it as well you've got an escort for the golems as well as the worms which will in fact aid you come the shatterer fight other events that i really like are the rifts that happen on the landscape you will be notified when a rift event is nearby and it's all about taking out waves of enemies and the final boss which happens to be one of those rift stalkers and doing that is another great way to earn lumps of mistonium not to mention if you are chasing for the lg one and two armor sets you will need to kill a bunch of these things in order to get the item drop to progress that collection as for worst of the jai bluff events are pretty much Everything else that really gets in the way once you've done them a couple of times and then they just become sort of annoying. And these are more specifically aimed at events that are based near the heart tasks. So in the north side near the Chantry, completing the heart tasks involve mixing and matching the various different factions and trying to get them to talk with each other. Now in between doing all that, randomly some NPC will pop up and say, hey, we're under attack. And then everybody in the area is kind of forced to get into the event mode and defend the three entrances into the that chantry this can get annoying really really fast especially if you're so close to finishing that heart task you just need to match one more pair of people but the event starts and then you got to spend an extra two minutes getting ready to defend those entrances and then you can just kill any of the branded that arrive as part of the event to finish that hard task like i said first few times okay but then it just gets really annoying especially when you're bringing more alts through and you've already figured out the fastest way to match two people for a conversation but you're forced into doing the event anyway and i get what arena net's trying to do they're trying to diversify how you complete your hard tasks and events are a great way to do that because killing those branded Branded, like I said, will progress that. Elsewhere in the village of Yatendi, the same thing kind of happens. You're picking up farming materials, you're planting crops, you're getting rid of branded crystals, you're feeding the local population. That all progress is the hard task. But every now and then, the village gets raided and that is an event. And that can be annoying too because this one scales really badly. So you'll have elite and champion mobs coming from the south area while other areas of the village are just veteran mobs. But if there's more than four or five people in the area, it's really difficult. And you'll end up just sitting there having completed the hard task. But you cannot access the vendor if the event is not over. So that's like five minutes of waiting around if you are on an empty map. And that, in my opinion, is pretty poor. I think the timing and the frequency of these events could have been planned way better than it is right now. And ultimately, it boils down to efficiency for the player. They've worked hard, they've spent the time to complete the heart task so they can talk to the heart vendor to buy either lumps of mistonium or buy something necessary for the allergy wanting to collection. And by cock blocking them because an event is going on, it's just a pain in the ass. And when you're bringing eight alts through a map just to do exactly that, it becomes really tiring. Moving on, let's talk about one of the main features this episode, which is Sun's Refuge. This is a personalized instance that is unlocked through the chapters in the story. And it becomes your home base, sort of. People that you help during the story and out in the map when you're doing the events will come to Sun's Refuge and set up shops there and every time you go back you'll find some more achievements to unlock people to talk to and just things to do in general so the best part about it is seeing it rebuilt and reshaped with your gameplay and map progress to unlock all kinds of things from a daily chest to a jukebox which you can play music it's also full of hidden surprises and achievement points like there's plenty of griffins lying around if you go up to all 22 of them and do a slash kneel command that in itself is a hidden achievement you can play hide and seek with some npcs in there for another achievement there's some dive goggles hidden around where you can take a dive and that's an achievement so it comes with plenty of things to do in there and the negative here or my concern is we don't know if this sun's refuge will have any form of longevity what is the long-term plan for sun's refuge will it play a key role in episodes moving forward and right now it definitely could use some improvement tweaks for example when you use your portal scroll to sun's refuge it takes you right at the beginning and then you have to ride all the way down to the middle why couldn't arena net just make us port into the middle of sun's refuge anyway i mean that's more convenient and arena net and guild wars 2 are 
are known for convenience, so I'm sure they can work on that. Next up, let's talk about the main story, and I've already said at the top of the video, I have reviewed this in depth, and you can watch that video on my channel. But just as a recap, my thoughts on the story are, it's emotional and impactful with what happens to certain key characters and their development arcs, which really comes full circle. It is a fun roller coaster ride with excellent throwbacks to events, places, and characters in the Guild Wars lore, and I think a lot of players can appreciate that. The negatives. It's short, but that's to be expected of a Living World episode, and you guys have seen me complete the entire story in less than three hours on stream. So in fact, you can complete the story in one sitting if all you care about is a story and you're not hunting for all the achievements and the LG armor collection and all that stuff. Dialogue placement and pacing could be way better, I think. There have been key moments in some of these chapters where players are more focused on mechanics rather than what some of these central characters are saying, and that really takes the enjoyment or the immersion out out of that moment, so that could be better moving forward. Moving on, let's talk about the map, Jahai Bluffs. Best part about it is the design. It's a cohesive traveling experience. I really like the design with all the new kings included, like that tornado that just moves around organically. I also like that because of the influence coming from the main story, all your old masteries from Heart of Thorns will have some uses on this map. So Wallows makes an appearance in addition to updrafts for gliding and all that stuff. Jackal sand portals are more useful than ever before as they no longer just take you to like hidden rooms where you get a vista or a POI. Sand portals now actually work like proper shortcuts and the shortcuts are placed efficiently and I think I've used my Jackal more this time around compared to any other map. We're Worst part about the map, probably how buggy it was at launch. It was buggy as hell, and if you jumped in recently and wasn't there in the first three days of launch, you wouldn't have seen a lot of the issues that a lot of us have seen when we were first playing it at launch. Trust me, a lot of it was buggy and it took some time for ArenaNet to fix. One of them was the race event that took you through the Jahai Bluffs Fortress because you had to unlock the Courtyard Point of Interest, which you can actually get by playing Chapter 1 of the new episode story. Say you've already done that and you got all the achievements from it and you're now just bringing your alts through and you don't want to run the story on all your alts, then of course the best way to get that POI is to do the race. Problem was, the race was buggy as hell when the countdown timer finished. If the walls didn't go down, then it was buggy, nobody could get through, and this happened for about a week before ArenaNet finally patched a fix and the race could be done again. Other annoying bugs included completion of the final chapter in the story, and just as a minor spoiler here, some of the mechanics involve getting on your raptor and, and escaping that instance, but a lot of players were getting killed because you were going out of bounds in an area that you were supposed to go through, so that's some coding issue there elsewhere, and this is also pretty important for the LG 2 collection for the Requiem armor skin. There were two prominent bugs. If you had already opened a box of heavy armor skins, the attendee village heart vendor didn't sell you the necessary component you need to progress that achievement collection. And for others, one of the requirements for the pieces included swim speed infusion plus one, which didn't exist in the game. It was supposed to be plus 10, and that took a while to fix. So there are a lot of people at various stages of completion when it came to the armor set collection, but just couldn't get past that finish line because of these bugs. And finally, this one's just out of opinion, the achievement points in this episode, and in fact in previous episodes since Path of Fire, has been really meager. There's about 100 or more achievement points in total that you can earn from this episode, which is a far cry from what Guild Wars 2 kind of offers in vanilla areas, in the previous Living World seasons, they were much more generous with what they offer in terms of achievement points. This time around, especially if you're a new player trying to catch up in-game and work towards stuff like achievement points and legendaries, you'll look at the amount of work that you have to put in for some of these episode 4 achievements and you go like, all that stuff just for one AP? Shit, that's not worth it. I'd rather go farm places like the Silver Waste, maybe, where you had a bunch of AP there, in addition to getting core Tyria Masteries as well. So new players could be A and Bing them and going, yeah, I'd rather do all the content because the new one, when it comes to AP, isn't just rewarding enough. This is a really minor thing as AP ultimately isn't some sort of an end game gauge for players to, to look on and see like, okay, this person is ready for raids or whatever. AP doesn't translate into that, but in Guild Wars 2, because of how the game is set up, achievement points kind of do matter. As a new player, you look around and you see all these people with 20 plus thousand AP going on to 30,000. You're like, how the F do I catch up to that? Especially when the content is current. ArenaNet, I don't know if they're trying to do this. I think right now they're kind of staggering the amount of AP that's being released for new content so that 
the players at the very top don't get any higher and the you know new players don't catch up too fast so i don't know what their plan is with ap but i all i can say is at the moment very meager and sometimes when you look at it not worth the effort i do them anyway because i like to complete as much as i can when a new episode comes out but i'd like to see some form of balance there moving forward and finally to wrap up the episode episode 4 also came with a new rate wing wing 6 the mythrite gambit and while i've not taken part in it myself i watch other guild wars 2 partners stream it on twitch and i gotta say it looks really fun the design according to some of the folks like roca and wooden potatoes have said that in terms of design this is one of the best raid designs in terms of boss fight and mechanics that they've seen in a long while and i believe these guys there's also a new legendary scepter i don't want to talk about legendaries right now i don't even have the mastery to craft any of the second gen legendary so i'm in no position to discuss that and that concludes my review for guild wars 2's latest episode for living world season 4 episode 4 a star to guide us now it's your turn feel free to share your thoughts and your experiences in the comment section below feel free to agree with me or disagree with me that's totally cool all my reviews are based on opinions of my experiences in games, so it's fun to sit back and chat about it and compare experiences with other players as well. Hit the like button for more on Guild Wars 2, and if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more MMO content. Once again, I'm Jeremy Adrian, and I thank you for watching. Hey folks, welcome to the end screen. Thank you very much for watching that video. If you want to watch more, you can click on the cards at the bottom here and feel free to subscribe to the channel with the button down there, which will give you notifications on all my latest uploads. Later, Gator.